Hello and good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our Spill the Tea Festival. Um, nice play on words, and I know you usually see me during Creative Corner and Self Care uh, series, but today I thought I'd share one of my passions. And in uh, celebration of National Tea Day, we are going to be making a few different tea options, as well as talk about uh, some history, some facts, and some health benefits too, as well. Uh, so I do have uh, four different uh, teas that we're going to be brewing and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our workshop. Before we do that though, I would like to go over some of the supplies you'll need. We have a lot of supplies in order to make different various teas today. So uh, first thing, we have a stress relief tea and that's five separate ingredients which includes lavender, chamomile, holy basil, ethelia root, and um, I forget what the last one is, lemon balm, which is this bag back here. We also do have some jasmine tea, matcha green tea, and then before I continue on with the rest of our supplies, if you are interested, I do have limited supply kits available uh, for curbside pickup, and you'll get a very lovely instruction sheet, as well as um, small bags of the jasmine, the stress relief, uh, also the black tea leaves, um, which is on this side. I don't know why I was pointing at jasmine uh, for the tea leaf reading. And then you'll also get some matcha green tea as well. So I do have limited supplies of the, the bags. And then as well, you will receive this coffee mug so that way you can do uh, some of the brewing at home too. Um, we are have a we have a sealable container for the stress relief tea, and then I also brought my personal um, tea cup for, from when I got for Halloween, uh, so that way I can show you different ways to uh, do all of these tea, tea brewing methods. But with that, let's go ahead and get started. First off, we are gonna go ahead and make a stress relief tea that's gonna help uh, alleviate stress, anxiety, depression, um, it's great for mental health overall. Uh, the ingredients I'm using today is uh, bought from Star Whisper Botanicals, which is located in Sacramento, California. And I decided to go with this company because all of their ingredients are organic. Um, so they're gonna be a, a whole lot more healthier. First off, we're gonna go ahead and do holy basil leaf. And in your mason jar container, using a tape, a teaspoon measuring spoon. You're going to measure out two teaspoons. And if you don't have a teaspoon and you just have a regular spoon, you're more than welcome to scoop out and then just give it a nice shape to level it off. But two teaspoons of holy basil. And then we also do have some lemon balm leaf. And with your lemon balm leaf, you're gonna do the same thing. Measure out a sp one spoon, so one teaspoon. Shake it off and then add it to your cup. We also do have some uh, dried out chamomile flowers. So I don't know if you can tell but you get that. And I don't necessarily shake off the chamomile but just because that they're large enough flowers. But you're gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of that too as well. And the last two ingredients are alethia root and lavender. And with both, you're gonna measure out half a teaspoon. So half of Elithio, uh, gosh, that's kind of hard to pronounce. And then half of lavender as well. Add that to your container. And I did use um, a hot water maker to get some hot water. And all you have to do is just add your hot water to your mason jar. And if you don't have a mason jar, 
you're more than welcome to use a large cup and then just get a saucer, place it on top. But I'm gonna get my spoon and push down my ingredients so that way they all get um, infused with the water. And you may get some of the, the leaves on your spoon, which is fine. But once you push down some of the ingredients, I like to add a little bit more water. And then all you have to do next is just go ahead and seal it off. Now the chamomile itself relaxes your nerves and it encourages a restful night's sleep. The lavender does that too as well and it helps decrease anxiety. Um, then the lemon balm reduces stress and anxiety too as well, but it also helps with your digestive system and your nervous system. So it's gonna help um, with that too as well. The holy basil um, is not only relaxing and uplifting, but it also helps with anxiety and depression. And then the Elysia root helps boost your physical and mental stamina um, that, and also promotes a healthier immune system. And tea fact number one, tea is one of the oldest beverages in the world, discovered about 2700 BC. And with that, we are going to go ahead and let this sit for a good 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and serve it. Okay, everyone. So after waiting 20 minutes, uh, your stress relief tea should be ready to go. But before we get st uh, started with the next step, I do have a, uh, a few examples of tea infusers that you can utilize. So I have these cute little animals that you can also get. So a platypus, otter, hippo, cat, or an owl. And then I also showed you the simple tea infuser, which is this little cage, um, and you just put it into your cup like so. And most of the other ones that I have here, um, actually hang on to the side of your cup um, and then the bottom portion has holes that um, are used to infuse your tea but when you do your stress relief tea all you have to do is just carefully take off the top and because we use hot water it's going to act as a suction for the top that's why I said you got to be careful but you can go ahead and take this top off. Uh, if you can stomach it, you're more than welcome just to drink straight out of the 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 the, the cup out like as is, or you can use a, a small strainer uh, to strain the contents into a separate cup, um, which I don't have a strainer with me today. But thankfully, I have this tea infuser. So let's see if I can do this. because it does have the mesh already. It's gotta be careful when you pour it out. You don't wanna get any of the tea leaves into your cup. I love tea like I mentioned, but I myself cannot stomach drinking tea leaves uh, myself. I don't know, I just don't like the texture in my mouth. When, when I'm drinking tea. But like I said, drain your tea contents into a separate cup using a strainer, and then your tea is good to go. Uh, and like I mentioned, this just helps alleviate stress, anxiety, depression. Yeah, and overall it tastes like, uh, almost like chai tea, um, but this is five different teas um, blended together um, utilizing like I said a separate container with a sealable lid you can also use a tea infuser if you want to and before I let you go uh, tea facts number uh, let's see seven and eight so that in the US Pure Leaf the company accounts for the top selling ready-to-drink teas in the US, like I said, 
and they ring in about $718 million in revenue. And then in China, uh, China accounts for about 40% of global revenue of tea, um, which totals roughly about $86 million in uh, US currency. Uh, so that was her really great um, tea facts. And this is Stress Relief Tea. Before we move on to brewing our next uh, tea, which is jasmine, uh, tea fact number two is that herbal tea blends don't contain any actual tea leaves, which is why they're usually caffeine free. They're concoctions of different herbs and spices like how we made our stress relief tea and other plants like chamomile, hibiscus, and mint. There are four major uh, types of teas. We have black, oolong, green, and white. Um, and it all depends on the ferment fermentation process as well as the drying out of the leaves. White is going to be less processed and it's a uh, Usually, um, early in the season, the, the leaves get plucked, um, so they're just baby leaves. And then black tea um, is usually the ones that are processed more. Uh, so they're, they're plucked late in the season, they get dried out faster. And, uh, so that's why you have different types of tea levels. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and work on our jasmine tea. And like I mentioned, in your little to-go bag, you get two of these jasmine tea bags. And all you have to do is that one side is perforated to open up your tea bag. And most teas do have this little tea bag here. Um, so oftentimes, like our stress relief tea, it doesn't actually come with a tea bag. So there are some alternative options if you don't want to infuse um, the tea itself in your water, and that's with tea infusers. There are many different types of these infusers. You can get them um, very basic, uh, like the one here, or you could get them in various shapes and sizes. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and continue on with our jasmine. And like I mentioned, I got this during uh, a Halloween sale, um, this past Halloween. So you're gonna go ahead and put your tea bag into your cup and then using your water, you're gonna go ahead and pour that in. And I like to pour over the tea bag to get it nice and saturated. And for this tea, I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the, the brim of the, coffee, or the tea cup. And then you're gonna go ahead and let that sit for two to four minutes. And before we continue on with our next tea, uh, tea fact number three is that most teas in an eight fluid ounce serving contains about two calories, zero grams of fat, zero grams of cholesterol, approximately 10 grams of sodium, 43 grams of potassium, uh, 0.4 grams of carbs, 0.1 gram protein, 26 milligrams of caffeine, um, and that's just an average cup of black tea. That doesn't necessarily cover like jasmine tea, the stress awareness tea, just your average run-of-the-mill black tea. All right, everyone, your jasmine tea should be done. Like I said, it takes about two to four minutes to properly brew. You have the option to either uh, add sugar or add honey. Me personally, I love adding honey more than sugar. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that aside. The honey that I have, I bought, um, it's locally sourced, raw and organic, and it's packaged by the uh, Rice's family. So I do have Southwest and Clover. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some Southwest flavor into my Jasmine tea. And before we add the honey, we do want to go ahead and take out the tea bag, strain it, just to get out some of the, the tea flavor from the, the tea bag itself. The tea bag is good for another serving if you choose to use it. But let's go ahead and add just a smidge of honey into our 
teacup. And we'll go ahead and stir that. And before we try it, I do have tea fact number nine for you. The world's most expensive cup of coffee rings at $200 per cup and it's served in, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Yuan in Sush, uh, Sushan, China. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'm, I am pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but the tea itself is fertilized using panda manure. So that's panda poo. Um, but once you have your, your honey um, stirred into the cup, you'll go ahead and uh, enjoy it. Oh, and before I forget, test out your, the temperature of your, your tea externally. Uh, so that way you don't burn yourself while drinking your tea. And that's a nice cup of jasmine tea. Now matcha, uh, our matcha green tea, is going to be slightly more difficult to make. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do this together. So you will need um, milk of any kind. Um, I personally can't drink regular milk, so I have soy milk with me. And I can't drink almond milk because I'm allergic to almonds uh, as well. And then we need some hot water. Your choice of maple syrup, honey, uh, or any other type of sweetener. And of course, our matcha tea. So, with that, you need to get your cup. And we have this lovely little strainer thing. We're gonna put over the cup. And we are gonna measure out one teaspoon of matcha. And it does get a little clumpy, so that's why we have the strainer, is to get rid of all those lumps. Carefully add that to your strainer. And while that is going, before we start straining that, you will need a measuring cup. Measure out six ounces of milk. Now, you will need to steam this, but because we don't have a steamer, I'm just gonna use a pot and a hot plate to go ahead and heat up the milk. And with your spoon, actually, um, yeah, I'm going to use my spoon. Work in circles to get rid of the, the clumps of matcha. Just to break down the clumps and get it to a nice fine powder. And once you have that done, you will need to measure out two ounces of hot water. Um, around 175 degrees and I do have an external temp so we can check our water let's check our water So it's about 168 degrees and that should be fine for our usage. We don't need the spoon anymore, but with your hot water, you're going to go ahead and add it to your uh, cup. Then using your whisk, 
you're gonna go in back and forth motion, zigzag, uh, just don't go in circular motions because we wanna uh, break down the matcha inside the cup. And it's up to you how your motions are. Um, like I said, back and forth, zigzag patterns. You just want to make sure to not go in a, a circular motion. So firmly holding your cup. And you just want to keep doing this until the matcha creates a nice foam on top and that the the matcha itself is uh, evenly distributed in your hot water. I think I'm burning my milk so I'm going to add a little bit more. Then we'll re-measure out the six ounces once it uh, gets a little hot. Want to be careful not to burn your milk as well. If you have a, a steamer at home, that's great. You can just, or you can also just warm up the milk so it's nice and hot. If you don't want to use milk, you can always also add more hot water to your cup. Me personally, I like milk, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add the milk. And I'm only going in half moon, um, half moon motions, because I want to be able to get um, the very edges of the, the the cup too as well. But. Once you've warmed up your milk, we're going to go ahead and re-measure out our six ounces. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and add your six ounces of milk into your coffee cup and please excuse the mess I have on the table this is the first time I'm making matcha as well and then you're just gonna go ahead and whisk your concoction together until you, it gets nice and foamy, which I honestly don't want to over whisk it to this, where it comes out of the cup. So I'm just lightly whisking the cup. And again, with your back and forth motions, not too aggressive. And I think that should be good. I don't know if anyone can tell, but this is the first time I'm making matcha. And then all you have to do is, like I said, add any type of sweetener you would like. And I'm gonna use just a drop of honey, nothing too serious. Incorporate that into the, the, 
the matcha green tea. And then all you have to do is just wait for it to cool down and enjoy your nice cup of matcha green tea. So while we are waiting for our matcha green tea to go ahead and cool down, we have a couple of other tea facts and um, that I would like to share for you. So tea fact number four, in the US, ready to drink tea, so that's the pre-made tea that you can uh, buy at any store. Uh, ready to drink tea accounted for 76.2% of the total revenue uh, yeah, total revenue in the U.S. The remainder of that percentage. So the... I'm terrible at math at the moment. Uh, 20... It's around 24. Yeah, about 24%. Thank you. Um, <laughs> is contributed to ready to drink coffee. Our tea fact number five... Uh, monkey Chief Tea, which is grown in Huangshan City in China, earned the title of the King of Green Tea at the International Tea Expo in 2004. And the, the tea itself is estimated to be roughly about $284 per gram. And last but not least, our tea fact number six, in the UK in 2017, 68% of people drink tea per day. With that percentage, 30% of those individuals drink roughly two to, four, two to three cups. And then out of that percentage as well, 21% 20 per, of those drinkers drink about four to five cups of tea. And I think this should be ready to drink. Like I said, we're waiting for it to cool down. And all you have to do is carefully, don't burn yourself if it's not cooled down. Not too bitter. Um, there are some matcha, uh, matcha teas that are... A little bit more on the bitter side, it just depends on what um, what package you buy. And then also depends on the milk you, you, you use. Like I said, we use soy milk, um, but it's also your preference. You can also just use hot water. Um, and again, we just made some matcha green tea. For our last uh, tea brewing method, we're gonna be focusing more on tassiology which is the study of tea leaves to help predict the future. And all you need for this is the black organic tea bags that I provided in your little to-go bag, or you can just use uh, organic black tea or also oolong tea. And then you also need your tea cup, and then you need a saucer too as well. But in order to do this, all you have to do is go ahead and open up your tea bag, get the bag itself. There's a little staple that holds everything together. So all you need to do is just go ahead. You can either remove this staple carefully or just rip off the top of your bag. Dump your black tea leaf contents into your cup itself. And then with your water, just go ahead and pour some hot water into your cup. Very slowly but carefully. And you're gonna go ahead and let that sit for about two to four minutes. Uh, before we uh, continue with, with waiting. <laughs> uh, tea fact number 10 is that the Turks from Turkey consume an average of almost seven pounds of tea per person annually. So that's every single year, about seven pounds of uh, tea. The Irish in comparison, so from Ireland, the world's second biggest tea drinkers consume less than five pounds of uh, tea per person 
a year. To help keep up with the supply and demand of the citizens and their insatiable um, tea drinkers, the tur uh, Turkey grows one fifth of the world's tea supply. So if you think about it, that's a lot of uh, tea. But like I said, we're gonna let this sit for about two to four minutes and then we'll go ahead and uh, start doing our tea leaf reading. After two to four minutes, uh, like your jasmine tea, your black tea should be ready. Um, and with this, you're gonna ask yourself a simple yes or no question um, that works best when you're doing tea leaf reading. Um, and then as far as how to read it, your handle needs, is um, kind of your point of direction. Uh, on the left hand side of your cup is gonna be the past. Uh, the right hand side of your cup will be your present. If the tea leaves are kind of toward the top but not reaching the top lip, that's your near future. The middle of the cup is your future. And the very, very bottom of your cup is a distant past, uh, distant future, not, uh, not past. So it's uh, further along the road. And in order to, like I said, uh, read tea leaves, all you have to do is just think of that simple yes or no question. Uh, whether it be, um, will I get the promotion? Or um, will someone love me back? Uh, it's entirely up to you how you, how you phrase the question. Just make sure it is uh, a yes or no. And then all you have to do is just go ahead and drink your tea. You are gonna get some tea leaves uh, drink, but the important thing is that you try your best not to drink all of your tea leaves. While you're thinking of the question, your saliva is gonna mix with the tea leaves, so it's gonna imbue your question into the tea leaves. So again, start with a simple yes or no question, and we'll go ahead and uh, uh, come back once I drink some of this tea as well. Instead of me boring you with drinking another cup of coffee, I went ahead and uh, went off camera and uh, drunk, drank most of the tea, but you do want some of the tea at the very bottom of your cup. And like I mentioned previously, uh, when you ask the question, make sure it's in the form of a yes or no question. Uh, yes or no answer. And then as far as your teacup goes, you will need to get a saucer. It doesn't matter the shape or size, but make sure when you when you do have your saucer that it kind of goes up or has this nice uh, dip to it so that way the tea leaves don't get all over your table. But you're gonna go ahead and flip over your saucer, grab your teacup as well, and very carefully yet quickly, you're gonna go ahead and flip it very quickly onto the saucer itself. Uh, so this is always the toughest part, but you're just gonna flip it. <clears throat> and what this does is that the tea itself is gonna start drain from the bottom of the cup on down the sides and down to the bottom. And then it's gonna drain onto your saucer. And you're gonna wait a good minute or so, so that way all the tea gets um, places. And uh, and depending on the way the tea leaves form, um, by drinking it and, and like I said, imbuing your question uh, into the tea leaves, that's how uh, tea leaves are, are able to be read. Uh, so with that, all you have to do is just very carefully Lift up your cup, pour it over, uh, and then you can also remove this off to the side. And I am no expert in tea leaf reading, but let me just go ahead and move this to the side. So the way your handle is situated, the top portion of the cup represents your past, the bottom half of the cup represents the present. Uh, and that's toward the very, very top of the cup overall. And then if you take a look on the side, um, if it's closer to the top, it's gonna be um, the 
kind of near future, so it could be tomorrow, it could be a week from now. The middle of the cup represents the future, which is about a month or maybe even a few months from now. And then toward the bottom of the cup is the distant future, so a year, two years from now. So it, it just depends on the time length. Um, and I don't know if you can see my tea leaves, but like I said, I'm no expert. But I do have tea leaves ranging from the bottom of the cup going on up to the side. So overall, it represents the distant future toward the bottom all the way into the future as well as the past. And deciphering symbols is not my forte. Um, but there are some available sites that you can go to to look up what the symbols mean. And just by looking at this, and it's all the matter of how you perceive the, uh, the symbols themselves, but um, this is gonna take me a while. But it looks like, I wanna say a squirrel toward the bottom of the cup, because you have the head here, and then the tail is on the opposite side. Or it could also be a lizard holding onto a tree branch. Um, so I do have one of these sites pulled up. So we're gonna look up a lizard, and then we'll look up a squirrel as well. Which it looks like there's no lizard on this one in particular. Um, and there's also, oh well, there's a squirrel. And the squirrel symbol represents the need to be thrifty. And then you can also decipher the symbols toward the top of the cup, which uh, looks like a triangle, several triangles. And triangles do mean different things. So if the triangle is pointed upright, which I'm gonna say it is, uh, it means that there's a positive situation involving three people. And then if it is reversed, it's a negative situation involving three people. But again, it's just a matter of how you decipher your symbols. There are ver various websites on reading symbols and what the symbols mean. Uh, this is just my interpretation, so if you want to take a look and then try to decipher, um, I'm not going to tell you what the, the what my question was. I'll just leave it ambiguous so that we can try to decipher the tea leaves on your own leisure. Thank you for joining me on our festival. <laughs> so we made uh, four different, well actually, yeah, four different types of tea. We went ahead and made a stress relief tea um, in, inside a mason jar. Um, if you don't have a mason jar that uh, with a covered lid, you can always just put uh, make it in a cup and put a saucer on top of it just to trap in the heat um, so that way it brews properly. We also made some jasmine tea, which takes about two to four minutes to make. Uh, we made some matcha green tea, which was my first time making it, so I'm glad that it came out all right, uh, and it was delicious. All these teas are delicious, by the way. Um, and then we also did some tea leaf reading using black tea, um, and that was also interesting because I'm no expert, but it was also really fun to decipher those symbols. If you are interested, we do have some uh, supply kits available, so we get this lovely bag. And in the bag, you get the stress relief tea, the jasmine tea, the matcha, as well as the black tea. Um, and it is available through curbside services. And then you also get um, a teacup. Right? Uh, so that's also pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts. We have everything from Facebook to Instagram, as well as YouTube. Um, and then... If you have any questions about what we did today, uh, you're more than welcome to give us a call. Uh, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But thank you very much. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.